So how do we deal with a vulnerable child? The child of an addict, whether it's drugs or alcohol, or the child whose parents have been imprisoned, or who perhaps have gone off from what they've seen as a short-term alternative to try and seek employment elsewhere, but actually have never returned. And so these children are left, you know, at a very young, a very vulnerable age to, to create their own ways in life. There's nobody there to look out for them. There's no other alternative. What do you do? Uh, because they were beaten at home or on the streets, they need a lot of uh, psychological help. This place is the first time that they receive good, balanced, healthy meals in their lives. It's hard to imagine that growing up in prison is the best option for these kids. Is it better for these kids to be trapped behind bars with their mothers who are being punished or out in the world without their mother's love and affection. There's still this opportunity to do good. You have lots of people who are interested in making sure that these children are safe and they thrive. Here we try to give uh, uh, not just uh, the basic thing they need, but we try to give them a hope that somebody cares about you. People can let us down. Even our own parents can fail us, but God does not abandon us. This world of ours is more beautiful, more complicated, and more inspiring than we could ever imagine. My name is Sanjay, and this is the story of a journey with Adra to serve a hurting world. I've spent the last six months seeing a side of our planet that not many people get to see, witnessing the most incredible challenges and the most extraordinary hope. Together, we've got a chance to impact the world in a whole new way. This is A Closer Walk. The statistics are staggering. At least one child younger than seven years old is abandoned every single day in Moldova. And as the poorest country in Europe, it is a country that is hardly prepared to take care of all of these children who have been left behind. Once known as the Garden of the Soviet Empire, Moldova produced fruit and wine for almost 300 million Soviet citizens. But the collapse of the Soviet Union led to one of the most dramatic peacetime collapses of any economy in history. All that is left are the crumbling relics of a time gone by. So where are we? Somewhere where is nowhere. A remaining part of our ex-history. This crumbling tower was started as a hotel more than 30 years ago. But like many things in Moldova, it has been left forgotten only a shadowy suggestion of what it could have been. To understand the, a nation, how it was formed, you have to see from where everything started. So to see why the problems you have now, you have to see the history, actually. After the fall of Nazi Germany, Stalin used arrests, executions, fear tactics, and deportation to force the population to abandon their Romanian heritage and submit to the communist regime. A lack of cultural identity, combined with a struggling economy, has led many Moldovans, who feel no allegiance to this place, to leave in search of better opportunities elsewhere. And now the biggest problem, actually, that our country would have is identity. We have more than one million people migrated abroad the country that uh, earned their existence and sent money back to our country. Andrei Gerlanu was born and raised in Moldova and has witnessed firsthand the flood of migrants leaving Moldova to work abroad. Why are all of these Moldovans working in other countries? They cannot find a good work place here and they cannot find a place that would give them enough funds to cover all the costs for their family. Moldova's current economy is dependent on the money sent back from those who have left. In the last few years, an average of $1.5 billion is being sent back to Moldova from those working outside of the country. 
So uh, I have seen quite a lot of changed lives at many, many, many families. But these migration processes bring pretty many problems, social problems. Nearly one third of the population has left to find work in other countries. It's still unclear if the financial benefit of those working abroad is worth the devastating effects caused by their absence. Of those left behind, the most vulnerable are the children who have had to fend for themselves. Many children remain without attention, without proper education. They remain with uh, maybe grandparents that cannot take care of them. These children are forced to find their own way, many turning to the street or hoping for the generosity of a stranger. I have a hard time thinking of what my three-year-old would do if we just disappeared tomorrow. And that's essentially what it is. A lot of these children, they lose their parents very quickly. They don't know that it's coming. Many parents that go abroad the country, they don't want to come back anymore. Or they find, found another, formed another families over there and these children remain without any attention. And unfortunately, this is the reality. We're on the top. We made it. Yep. And we discussed about the top of our problems. It's hard to imagine what life is like for a child in Moldova who has been abandoned. At home, they, let's say, didn't get, get enough love. And if you don't get love, you will not be able to give it back. And it's my unprofessional uh, prediction that we will have a generation that doesn't know what is love, will not be able to form normal families, and the real disaster just start coming, actually. At Adra's Rainbow of Hope Children's Center, outside the capital city of Kishinev, there are children being given the chance for a new life, an opportunity to feel what it's like to be taken care of. For many of these kids, it is their first time in a loving environment, but the violence and anger that has been such a regular part of their lives is not easily erased. This is the Rainbow of Hope Children's Center in Moldova, outside the capital city of Kishinev. For the children here that have been abandoned, getting off the street is the first step in rebuilding their young lives. But learning how to exist in this new environment is for some a real challenge. Dar anumii copiii care sunt maltratați sunt, sunt cei mai vulnerabili și de ce ei au mai mult nevoie de ajutor. Vreau să le arăt că există un alt fel de viață în care ei pot să zâmbească și pot să nu se teamă de lumea înconjurătoare. Via Rico works alongside the other social workers at the center to help reintegrate the kids into society. Când vin aici să le arăt că copiii pot fi înconjurați și de dragoste și de afecțiune. Acest program o să ne ajute ca să ne ridicăm la nivelul la care ar, ar trebui să fie în conformitate cu părstă. Uh, as we told that uh, these children are from the streets, that's why they have uh, not only physical problems, they also have uh, uh, psychological problems, emotional problems, and that's why they need a lot of uh, psychological help, uh, because they were beaten at home or on the streets. Uh, many people, they simply treat them very badly. And as Italia, the director here at the Rainbow of Hope Center gave me a tour around, I could see immediately how well this place was prepared to provide these kids with all of the different kinds of help they need.
we try to keep these colors in every room. Here we have orange room, there we have pink one and other like colors of the rainbow. Every child has their personal spot that they're responsible for this, so that it will be cleaned, to bring this in a washing machine. Мы говорили об этом, что им не предоставляется медицинское обеспечение, что они в процесс обучения не включаются. То есть все до сих пор, что мы говорили. Really, children come from so poor conditions. They really didn't know that uh, about hygiene they need to do cleaning and uh, they didn't know duster or something. And they learned it here, everything. Queen is from Queen. 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 And this is post number one we have here. It's a room for educator. And this educator uh, stays with the children non-stop. This is probably the first time that they're getting real instruction, real teaching. Is that pretty common? Many times uh, some children come here and they're supposed to go to the first grade, but they're not prepared physically, morally and so on. And that's why they gather a committee with the, all the staff and they consult each other uh, should this child go to the first grade or not or we need to go to keep him in kindergarten and they create a program how to help this child you know to be prepared for this first grade this is a personal approach here and education is not the only thing getting a personal approach every aspect of their physical and mental health is considered carefully each meal is an opportunity for healthy nourishment and a lesson in responsibility. Every day they have a schedule and they have uh, duties assigned, uh, some children, who help to put the food on the tables, then to clean after that and to wash dishes. Uh, they do it uh, together with the educators. If they are small children, they help with the chairs to put everywhere. Все по времени, как положено детям. То есть, если дети дома у себя могли сутками не есть. They supposed to educate children even in food taking because many of them they starve at home. They come, they see food, they want to eat a lot, a lot, a lot, and it's really damage to their health. And they try to encourage them to stop and to eat enough food. So basically, for most, if not all, of the children that come here. This place is the first time that they receive you know, good, balanced, healthy meals and this type of treatment, basically in their lives. Unfortunately, it's true. But even with the loving environment the center provides, life can be a challenge for the kids who have come from really tough situations. Anna and her sister Daniela have been at the center much longer than many of the others. Unlike some who can eventually get reconnected with their family, for these two, that is not an option. The situation is that uh, the mother killed her father. You can imagine the father is dead, the mother is in prison, and uh, two of these children, they have seen these things. They were pretty, uh, having pretty serious psychological problems at those times. Atunci când o mamă este se află în detenție, este închisă, se primește că și copilul este privat de mamă, de dragostea unei mame. Because the mother and child connection is so important, the center helps Anna and Daniela make the long trip to visit their mother. Today, they are joining several other families for a visit to the women's prison. No matter what circumstances the mother is in, even if it's prison, her connection to the child can be the most important thing in the child's healthy development. If she loves the children, if she wants to take care about, of them, um, then it's better than any center. Uh, and you better help that mother uh, in other ways so that she can support uh, her children. Any mother is better than uh, any center. Today, at Skopel Women's Prison, 
They are having a family day so that the children of women who have been incarcerated can visit their mothers. Since these events happen only a few times a year, it is an exciting day for the mothers and the children. Este un sentiment pe care îl poate simți doar o mamă. Un moment în care vrei să-l strângi în brațe și nu-i mai dai voie de lângă tine. Să-l ajuți, să-l protejezi, să-l mângâi, să-l ții pe palmă. E că copilul tău este o părticică din tine. În așa mod, copilul va crește mai liniștit, se va simți protejat, se va simți iubit, va avea mai multă încredere în sine. Copiii sunt cel mai frumos lucru în viața noastră. Anna and Daniela are headed to Ruska to visit their mother who is imprisoned for killing their father. Even though it's a challenging trip to make, it's important for the girls to see their mom. The majority of women in prison for committing violent acts were defending themselves or their children from abuse. The World Health Organization estimates that there are about 100,000 women in Europe who are in prison. Many of these are mothers who are the primary or sole caregivers for their children. For Anna and Daniela, today is a happy reunion. But for younger children and babies, having an incarcerated mother can lead to even more challenges. So where are we headed now, Andre? We're going out to the Prunkul prison. It is situated outside the city, a few kilometers from the city. There we have two prisons. They live mothers that have uh, small children till three years old. So all of these children were born in prison to mothers who were prisoners? Some of the women, they get pregnant in, into the prison. Some of them, they uh, get pregnant being, being already in the prison. After three years old, uh, the child is taken uh, from the mother. And the child is taken whether to the family, extended families, or if there is no, no solution, then it's taken to the orphanage. I could already tell, this was going to be unlike any prison I had ever seen. That's a discidium usha de hour. That was designed like this, that they would not feel that they are in the prison. So uh, all the buildings, you, you have just the bars, you have just the outside uh, w big wall and the fence outside so but it's everything is painted with nice colors that the children would not feel that they're in the prison there's been a real effort to create a space that feels in some ways like a home unlike the other sections of the prison here each woman contributes to the cooking cleaning and taking care of the space now here is the playroom that you can see it's hard to imagine that growing up in prison is the best option for these kids. But there is a lot of evidence showing that children, especially in the first years of life, develop much better when they are with their moms. These kids won't likely have memories of this place and certainly don't experience it as a place of confinement. But they will benefit greatly from being with their mothers. And I could see so clearly that it wasn't just the babies who benefited from this bond. One important element of this program is to give the women a chance to learn how to be mothers, to learn how to take care of their kids, and ultimately to be better parents once they've served their time. Women prisoners who have a relationship with their children are far less likely to be repeat offenders and end up back in prison. Uh, this is a standard room for two people. Okay. They, they stay two people in one room. The babies have their um, uh, beds. This is one bed. Just in this one room, you can see so many different yeah. things that really liven up and brighten up the... They want to keep it like um, no big difference so that the children would not see this difference how it would be at home or here. But there are some differences that are unavoidable. For a new baby, it's easy to see that proximity to the mother is all that matters.
But what about for a two-year-old whose whole experience of life has happened in the confines of a prison? Is it better for these kids to be trapped behind bars with their mothers who are being punished or out in the world without their mother's love and affection? These kids have lived their entire lives here. They've only been beyond these walls one or two times in their life. The small prison yard with barely any grass is all they know of the outside world. Although these mothers do their best to help their children have a normal life, there's no escaping the fact that these babies are locked in prison. At Prunkel Prison, outside the Moldovan capital of Kishnev, there's a program that allows mothers who are incarcerated to keep their children and raise them for the first three years of their life. It's clear that there are advantages for the children to be with their mothers, but what is it like for them to live their lives trapped behind these prison walls? Today, these mothers are taking part in a new program that gives them a chance to take their kids out into the world. This program works with the mothers and children in the prison to give them the possibility to get out of the prison, make children get to know the outside world, for the mothers to know a little bit about the world around them and to kind of integrate them to the society that they're going to live in the future. These kids are getting to see the outside world for the first or second time in their life. Even the simple things that we take for granted are totally new experiences for them. I got a chance to talk with Bianca, a mother serving a 12-year prison sentence, and asked if she thought her son knew that his life was different from other kids. He doesn't know the difference because he's never been outside the prison. He didn't see other children. So he probably doesn't know the difference. For him, it's a normal life. How do you like having Roma with you? Her first child died at the age of six and a half. So she's really happy that she can have a child beside her. So this is a big comfort for her. She's trying to spoil him as much as she can. So he can feel that he's loved. Totuși, dragostea pe care ei o primesc de la mame nu poate să le dea nimeni. Even if these children are limited in going outside and having, you know, other friends in the society, it can't be changed for mother's love. This is the best thing they can have. Dragostea maternă nu schimbă nimic. Mother's love you can't change for anything. Every case, every child is a story apart. And the solving of the problem is also a case apart. You cannot have formulas, it's not mathematics. We see children who are just lost. They don't necessarily know where to go. They don't necessarily know what to do. They're children. And so they're, they have the minds of children and they require guidance. But we put it in the heart of every child and we try to help each other. This is an experience that has made me other people to see the world and the people who are in the middle of the world. În primul rând, Dumnezeu vrea prin noi să vadă că noi putem să le arătăm și ceilalți ce înseamnă dragoste. There's still this opportunity to do good. You have 
lots of people who are interested in making sure that these children are safe and they thrive. More than just a place to lay their head at night, programs like Adra's Children's Center are giving these kids a chance to have a home, to be a part of a family, and have a childhood. Here we try to give uh, uh, not just uh, the basic thing they need, not just education, not just food, medical things, but we try to give them a hope that somebody cares about you. People can let us down. Even our own parents can fail us. But God does not abandon us, ever. <laughs>